Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. It's Rock and Roll Spot Command here with the weekly comic book roundup. This time we'll be focusing on the uh, yeah, this week's adult Absolute Carnage tie-ins, our Spider-Man related books, and Marvel Cosmic. So let's get started with Absolute Carnage Scream. Okay, first off, who is Scream? Scream was introduced back during uh, the Venom miniseries Separation Anxiety. Um, I'm pretty sure was, that was the case. Uh, but yeah, uh, during well, Separation Anxiety was partially was the partial basis for the Venom movie. And One of the things that happened is Venom's symbiote got cloned, and the clones were then bonded, bound to, ver to life foundation people, including Donna Diego, who would become Scream. Well, the symbi Venom managed to defeat his uh, his progeny with some help from Spider-Man, and went on about his, his life. They popped up at various other points, and in fact, in... I believe it was the Venom series, in 2003... The Scream symbiote was uh, ended up being uh, bound to a woman named Patricia Robertson. But she's no longer that. Anyway, so we'll get to her, but we'll get more of her as the issue. As we get into things, so as for as for the overall absolute car, this is I think this is really just going to kind of bring the other symbiotes in. So there's not much, nothing directly from issue one is mentioned in this, except that Carnage is on the loose. So yeah, all right. So we begin with Donna Diego being. Resurrected. She has since died. But the sim what's left of the simulator has resurrected her. And so she heads towards New York. Um, a, f a family is running from what appears one of the uh, symbiote uh, thugs made by made presumably by Carnage in the end of the Absolute Carnage number one. But it's stopped, it's pulled back by Scream. Not because Scream's trying to be good. No, no, no. Scream wants them for herself. So then we we uh, pop, we uh, focus we focus on Patricia Robertson and uh, she knows that Carnage is back in New York. She's surprised how quiet things are, but so, but of course the quiet is quickly and quickly ends. We go more into her backstory, but apparently she was Venom for a brief period. You know, she wasn't actually Scream, she was Venom. She was actually bond, bound to a clone of Venom itself. I actually might be wrong about the Life Foundation. They may be spawn, uh, actual uh, spawn offspring of the symbiote. 
much the same way Carnage is. But she says she's been lying low, and she knows something something's going down related to symbiotes. So she's she says she's done waiting for the nightmares to heal, work themselves out of her head, done prepping for and planning and training. So she's got a uh, she's armed, and so she goes after the symbiotes. Hasn't had the opportunity to test it, but hey, field test. Part one of the... But the rounds she's using are sonic rounds, so they do work with the... work well against the symbiotes. And she's when she got the idea from the 4th of July when her and her brother used to buy whistling bottle rockets or screamers. And she realizes something is very off when she shoots Scream, namely that the symbiote is bonded to a corpse. And then the Scream symbiote, after the, the corpse Donna is dead, goes after Patricia. And Patricia, Patricia kind of revels in it. She forgot how good it feels that, you know, to have the symbiote, to be bound to the symbiote. You know, there's a sort of power, there's a strange sense of togetherness that she's have to go it alone. And there's a voice in her head. And then you kind of you get a little bit of back and forth, you know, a friend. And it... It appears though there's more than just one voice. One voice claims to be Donna, Di Donna Diego. Another one claim. Another one doesn't really say. But it presumably would be a. So she. But yeah, we get kind of the basics that you know. Okay, God is coming. Null in this case. But they help. And what they want more than his purpose. That if they found it. And they only hear one voice, the voice of God. Surely only God could raise them from the grave. Only God could take something that was cast so carelessly aside and give it utility once more. And so, they're going after someone else. This time it's Andy Benton. Andy Benton is the host of a was a host a symbiote host herself, Mania. You know, it was back during Agent uh, during Agent Venom. And while she manages to take down the thugs, uh, Scream is probably going to be a little bit, bit tougher for her. And it also appears that uh, Andy's got some. Uh, some magic stuff going on. I say this daily because of the uh, inverted pentacle on her, the glowing inverted pentacle on her chest at, at various points. So yeah. All right, that's it for, for this. Um, Scream is a three issue miniseries we'll be running through over the course of uh, the next few months to co to tie into Absolute Carnage. So, next up, we've got Absolute Carnage Separation Anxiety. So you remember how I mentioned that, that Scream was initially created during the sort of separation anxiety? Well, there were four others with her. Those four others, um, they haven't had the best lifetime. To the point where they've all kind of been amalgamated into a, taking over a dog. Which is where... We find them now in Carrington Cottage, Colorado. Anyway, so the dog here is the crying of a little girl. And goes to the girl and the girl explains, you know, there's 
you know, her her family's breaking up, or her mom is taking her and her brother away, and you know, this she just wants to. She just wants the family back, you know, back together, you know? Not fighting any, not fighting each other, but all together as one again. So, but Sadie has to go, has to pack. So she slips in, you know, and she lets the dog in too. The dog stops and watches Sadie's parents argue. And in a very and reveals its its true nature to them. Meanwhile up in the attic, Sadie goes to talk to her brother. You know, hey, check out what I got. Check out what I found. It's gonna, you're gonna love it. But they get down there and it's a, I swear it's like a scene ripped from John Carpenter's the thing. I mean, seriously. So, yeah, her parents are being taken over by the uh, the portions of the various uh, symbiotes. And so Sadie tries to save her, her uh, brother and herself, but it's and the symbiotes keep saying, "Hey, you know, you want to be a family, right?" Well, hey, join us. We'll and we'll be together as a family. And briefly, one of the neighbors pops up and you know, kind of, hey, I heard some shouting. Is everything okay? And apparently, one of them can spit acid and does does so. And, yeah. So she tries to use sound, or a radio, but it doesn't do the trick. It's not loud enough. And Sadie's brother gets gets snapped, gets nabbed. Then, and she and so Sadie tries to use you, you, the whole makeshift flamethrower thing with a, a lighter and a. Uh, and some hairspray, which having the two of those just lying around in the bath, hairspray lying around, okay, but a lighter. I mean, maybe that's where you smoke your pot, but you know, I don't know. It it seems like a contrivance. And it does slow the meals down, but then of course they, the can of hairspray is empty. So he's trying, continues to try to get away, and in the end, no, even Sadie gets gets taken in by by the symbiote. So later on, we see the family. The house is torn up, and. Family's packing up into the station wagon. They're heading to New York. And, so, and Sadie's brother starts playing I Spy, saying, I spy with my little eye something red. And this will be continued in absolute carnage. This is just one shot. Okay, here's actually a good shot of the five uh, symbiotes. I know the green one is called Lasher. This is actually three. Uh, how three of the variant covers look when connected. I think it's the screen. The variant covers the screen. Yeah, yeah. Scream has three connecting variant covers drawn by Mark Bagley. 
my personal favorite uh, Spider-Man artist, and the and currently the artist on uh, um, Spider-Man Life Story, also the co-creator of Carnage himself. Anyway, moving on to Symbiote Spider-Man number five. So where we left off, Mysterio had been empowered by a chunk of Spider-Man's black costume that uh, had been that he had gotten courtesy of uh, Black Cat, and he had Spider-Man prisoner on on the seven train. Because he wanted the whole thing, not just a piece. And so, Spidey and Mysterio continue their fight. And Mysterio's kind of just going nuts with... he. The, the, the portion of the symbiote is reacting to him. And this is also a symbiote... A, a black costume controlled Spider-Man. This is not Spider-Man... This is not Peter Parker in control. This is the, the symbiote. But Black Widow or Black Cat shows up and helps out. Meanwhile, Aunt May is, wait, is still waiting for Peter. She's been waiting for a while now. But Black Cat shows up and manages to, well, screw up. Uh, the illusions that Mysterio's got going. So, but but he figures, you know, your luck card probably won't, won't affect chemi simple chemistry. So if you combine potassium, permanganate, glycerin, and water, what do you get? Fire. Which, of course, causes the symbiote, this portion of the symbiote, to escape and return to Spider-Man. And because, as we all know, fire is one of the symbiote's weaknesses. And so Spider-Man beats the crap out of, out of Mysterio. He probably, probably comes so close to killing him, but Black Cat stops him at least for a little bit. But he does get a little bit of a shock from Mysterio, and so Mysterio escapes. But that shock is enough to wake up Peter and kind of, wait a minute, why am I here? But Mysterio's still trying to, you know, do do Mysterio crap, and so he makes a he makes a a, a hologram of a uh, dinosaur. But the hard light aspect is malfunctioning. Still, thanks to Black Cat, and so Spider Man and Black Cat stop him. Spidey goes up. Spidey goes off and hoping to catch Aunt May for breakfast. And Black Cat says to Mysterio that well, strongly suggests to Mysterio that he forget whatever he's learned about about her and Spider's costume. Or at least he keep his, keeps it to himself. But He's hoping that the costume kills Spider-Man. Anyway, Peter arrives at the, at the Pancake Cottage and gets a note from May, which we don't, we don't see what the note says, but yeah. He calls, he calls her up and they talk a bit. And she hangs. He's trying to make excuses and, well, yeah. Gets hung up on. After the story ends, though the symbiote Spider Man will return. 
Seriously, there, there's going to be a City of Spider-Man uh, one-shot during abs that ties into Absolute Carnage. Moving on to Miles Morales, Spider-Man number nine. Where we left off with Miles Morales, he had been kidnapped, was being tested constantly, assessed, so to speak. So we start off, his parents are, it's been two days, his parents are going nuts. And they can't, his dad said, you know, we can't go to the cops. You know, if we do that, then this whole, the whole, because whatever this is, it's got to do with him being Spider-Man. If we go to the cops, cat, that, the cat's out of the bag. Everyone knows Miles is Spider-Man. So, but his dad's working some, some ex shield angles. It's slow going because he kind of really burned his bridges, but yeah. But his uncle shows up because he knows that he knows Peter's, he knows that Miles is missing, and he wants to help. And so it's agreed that yeah, they'll help. They, they, the two of them are work. Miles' and dad and Prowler are going to work together. So first they go and see go to Red Hook, see it. And see a uh, well, tech girl named Ceres, who made a who made a suit for for Aaron. And he explains it. Yeah, okay, I, I've gone straight. But for this, I owe you my services. Any job you want, all expenses included, no questions asked. So the two of them go to to a building. Dumbo. Make their way, take out the guards on the roof, make their way through, but an alarm is sounded, and so they have to fight their way downstairs. Further and further, as they get closer, uh, Prowler, Uncle Aaron, notices that he's got vitals on a teenage boy of superhuman biometrics, so it's got to be Miles. And they find Miles strapped to a table. They get him free, but Quantum shows up. And so Prowler and Quantum duke it out. And for a while, Quantum Prowler actually kinda of, kinda of gets, you know, kinda of has the advantage. But Quantum basically Quantum has Figured out. Okay, this is what's going. This is what's going on with Prowler. All right, I got that. But the co combination of spy of Miles, Prowler, and Miles' dad, yeah, it's Quantum simply teleports away. So they they get Miles home and. When all is said and done, Miles' dad and, my, and Miles' uncle hug, and Aaron, Uncle Aaron's been invited to dinner. And that is where the issue ends. And finally, last book of the week is Silver Surfer Black, number three. So where we left off is Silver Surfer Black. Having gone through a black hole, Silver Surfer ended up in the past on the planet of the symbiotes, where he faced off with Null, and managed to escape with the help of Ego, the living planet. So we start off with a, a flashback and to uh, Silver Surfer remembering Shalabal, 
his, his, the love of his life. But what he's remembering is, of course, the day that Galactus came to Zen La. Well, this uh, it turns out, however, to be a nightmare, and it's not Galactus who, who arrives on the planet, but rather a giant silver, a giant blackened silver surfer. He comes to though in the gravity well of uh, of ego. And they discuss what's been going on with him. And what? But something's wrong with ego. Apparently, something crashed into ego. Mira, some type, of some kind. It's embedded deep in his core. It's growing. It's killing him. And so... Surfer says, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll fix this for you. And so he makes his way through. And... The very... He makes makes his, his way through the various points of or the various levels of of ego and then he discovers what it actually is though the meteorite that crashed into into ego was none other than life bringer one the cosmic incubator of Galactus. And that is where the issue comes to its end. And that is it for this week's roundup. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal are in the description box down below. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I put up new content. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying... Live long and rock hard.